a few years after the um, Pan African Parliament started operating, it became quite clear that it is an invisible and inaccessible institution. And we at the center kind of strategized around the premise that to energize the Pan African Parliament, you need civil society engagement. The past five years, we've been working with the Pan African Parliament and supporting various committees of the Pan African Parliament. But for the first time in its inception, the Pan African Parliament has given civil society an official parliamentary seating. And I think it's important for us to note that, that the Pan-African Parliament is making an effort to realize the provisions of their protocol as a continental body that is established to engage with African citizens. I am particularly excited for today's forum, not only because it is incredibly monumental, but uh, because of the challenges and the opportunities and the aspirations that we've been able to attain in one day. It seems like a day, but it's been a journey for quite a while. And so today is very much important, uh, particularly to members of the Pan-African Civil Society Forum. So over the years, we built this coalition of civil society organizations to interface with the Pan-African Parliament. And today there is a culmination of those efforts. Today we had members of the Pan-African Parliament sitting together with members of civil society and uh, trying to influence each other in terms of how to take this project of African integration and African human rights realization forward. So I think today we've actually come closer, a step closer to realizing uh, truly people's parliament. I'm excited about uh, the continued existence of this forum because uh, it brings together the members of this parliament as representatives of the people but also the representatives of the grassroots who are involved with the people on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think uh, that is a very important building block for the continent. It was very enriching hearing what civil society had to share about the conflict situation within our continent, but also hearing what the members of parliament have to say about the steps that are necessary or that have to be taken in order to come to a solution or consensus about these issues. Uh, but of course, pro promises remain empty when there is no execution. For me, the outcome of the forum that I was hoping and I'm excited by is the continued engagement with our elected representatives and I think when we have constitutional legitimacy um, especially at the continental level it's something that we are significantly excited by as a member of civil society who wants to try and continue the fight towards a greater access for human rights and democracy um, all governments across the continent needs to pay more attention to ensuring that all of these spaces that we have such as the Pan-African Parliament are accessible for all communities and so the collaboration between civil society and Parliament as well as other AU organs will enrich the fight and the strife towards um, ensuring that there's uh, legitimacy of not only of the institutions but also of the individuals who are represented in that space. I um, got to um, talk about African problems and we had an opportunity and a privilege to actually um, come up with possible solutions that we think could be implemented. These kinds of encounters are always important for civil society both to caucus internally with other civil society organizations but also have this quite unique opportunity to speak to the parliamentarians of Africa um, about the issues that are serious. This morning we heard about Sudan, we heard about Tunisia, we heard about Zimbabwe, all of them going through conflict in a different way and there's urgency for our continent to act and I think the civil society interest in this forum shows the expectation that African civil society has of our leaders and we hope that they will step up to the plate. The issue of uh, conflicts in the continent is a serious one. No uh, uh, economic growth can be realized in the continent as long as we are fighting amongst ourselves. And we are saying each and every country must enhance democracy, respect the will of our people if we want 
want this um, uh, continent to prosper and we committed ourselves that we'll journey and soldier on with a civil society. And we came up with an agenda with a focus on uh, peace and security and the crisis in the Horn of Africa right now and in other places, Zimbabwe, Tunisia, Eswatini, Sudan. There's quite a lot of um, conflict and security issues happening within the African region and it is ideal and monumental that we are able to have different stakeholders provide uh, their ideas, their inputs and their expertise to this topic. And I think um, the biggest takeaway or what um, the biggest aspiration which was incredibly ambitious in this forum is the receptiveness that we've been able to receive from the Pan-African Parliament, their members, uh, various committees that have opened their doors and they're willing to continue this conversation. We note all the recommendations, we note the observations by the civil society, no parliament, no government can work alone. We cannot leave a civil society behind and therefore we made a commitment that in August we will be reporting back to the plenary on each and every item that was raised by civil society. The Center for Human Rights point of view, we want to recognize the efforts uh, by the Pan-African Parliament to open its doors to members of civil society. But we also want to extend our gratitude to members of civil society and our partners, particularly Open Society Foundation, um, for funding and partnering with us in other ways to make sure that this, this event is a success. Um, for me particularly, I hope that we'll be able to have more opportunities for meaningful engagement where civil society is not just invited, but um, our ideas, our expertise and our input is taken seriously and into consideration and that we can continue having more structured engagement with the parliament and hopefully uh, agree to the mutual aspirations of the African continent. Towards ensuring that the future of this continent is one that is prosperous and just um, for all citizens. Uh, in order to strengthen the framework of the Pan-African Parliament and, and the African Union together, uh, what needs to be done is consistent commitment needs to be emphasized, especially from member states in implementing binding enforcement mechanisms that promote accountability and advocate youth inclusivity. That is one important thing I think could have been uh, really raised a lot more uh, during today's event, uh, especially during policy discussions and implementation efforts, for it is only when we are all seated at the table that Africa never again has to fear becoming prey to the world's menu. I want the integration of Africa. What are the impediments? Why is it not happening? We should use these engagements to identify the root causes. For instance, uh, our icon Nelson Mandela said that uh, the neglect of African arts, culture and heritage, which are the mainstay of the African soul, makes us to lose our fundamental human values. Secondly, the fact that uh, under colonialism and imperialism, uh, African lands and natural resources were taken by foreigners. And now, as Africans now, we are the poorest, whilst our continent is the richest. And uh, we are fighting amongst ourselves for the crumbs that fall from the table of former colonial powers. So Africans, and especially civil society, must demand the expropriation of African land and natural resources and the equipment of our young people with skills so that we can be self-reliant, self-sufficient. So going forward, I'm really looking forward to taking this work and I'm really grateful that we still have CHR Pretoria as a platform to host the CSO Forum so that we can continue meeting in plenary so everybody knows what everybody is doing and we're moving together but also do a division of labor where we go down and align ourselves to the various committees and really get work done in a way that the woman and man, girl and boy in an average African village or uh, urban area will be able to feel the impact of power.